You want one word? An Amiga? Right on. <laughs> Amazing Amiga, that's it. I was going to say awesome, but that sounds like a cartoon. <laughs> radical, and it's certainly a radical machine. Awesome. One word? Amiga. Friend. You know, I mean, that's what it means. The Amiga has always belonged to the Dreamers. It was invented by an eclectic band of individuals led by Jay Minor, a group that became close friends with an active sense of humor, an overactive work ethic, and an almost childlike enthusiasm. They set out to make their dream computer, one they'd like to use themselves, real cool, real fast, with lots of power and lots of wissy demos. The team was brilliant, creative. Without a thought, they abandoned the stodgy conventions that said computers are computers and toys are toys. And whether you believe the Amiga is a game machine or a business machine, there's no denying that the combination of power and graphics was a revolution in computing. Only now are the other computers beginning to meet the standards that the Amiga inventors set almost 10 years ago. That original Amiga team created the machine. They brought to it their unique personality and put out something totally new. Their story is unique. It tells of entrepreneurship, passion, trust, courage, and friendship. It's a very personal story. It belongs to Jay and Dave and Carl, the four Bobs, and all the others at Amiga. It can't be told by anybody else, so when we decided to record the story, we brought the original members together, collected their personal photographs, and borrowed their home film footage. Here, in their own words, is the story of the making of the Amiga. Well, it was in 1982, a friend of mine that I used to work with at Atari uh, came to me and said, hey, Jay, let's start a new company. I'm tired of this one. And uh, I said, well, fine. Uh, I said, uh, I'll do the chips for it, and I'll be, your vi be the vice president if I can do the chips my way. Uh, my original vision of the machine was as a, a low-cost entry into the computer field via the uh, video game area. Video games at that time were really hot, and all our investors wanted was a video game. But uh, I wanted something that could be expanded into a real computer. They, we got a uh, vice president out from back east called Dave Moore, a uh, president rather, called Dave Morse, uh, who was vice president of Tonka Toys, came out to be our president, and started a little company over on Scott Boulevard in Santa Clara called High Toro. And uh, High Toro later got its name changed to Amiga Corporation. <laughs> High Toro, High Toro, which is interesting. High meaning big, great, grand. I, I don't, I Toro <laughs> meaning bull. bull. <laughs> First thing I thought of when I saw that name was um, lawnmowers. And so I think that they, when they talked to other people about it, they got the same impression too, that it was a lawnmower company. So they changed it. And uh, Amiga Corporation was what it was when I joined. And Amiga was... Uh, they chose the name Amiga because they were looking for something that meant friend or friendly. But in Silicon Valley, there is an extremely high concentration of computer companies. And there's a lot of spying that goes on all the time and people trying to take ideas from other people and trying to outdo one another. And so it's really important to conceal what you're doing and to, you know, at least to not broadcast around the things that you're working on, especially and with the project that we're working on with the ideas that we had, we thought that we had a gold mine in our hands and that we were going to be able to do something really major with this idea. So we had to hide it as much as we could for as long as we could. And so they set the company up to the real world to look as if it was High Toro and then Amiga Computer, a company that made game peripherals. And the industry said, what's that new company over there on Scott Avenue? And they went and they looked with their binoculars in the window and they saw, oh, joysticks, no problem, okay. <laughs> when I first interviewed at Amiga, it was very interesting. I was there to do a game machine. I got hired to work on, you know, the next greatest game machine is gonna be the greatest thing. And, uh, and I'm talking with everyone, and I interviewed with everyone, and I, I talk with the harder guys, and I talk with them, and I'm 
talking with Dave Morris, and he's giving me the spiel, you know, oh, the next greatest machine, and oh, it's going to be a wonderful take the game industry by storm. And then I, I made my way back to Jay's office, and I'm talking with him to get a feel for the real, you know, what the hardware is really like and stuff like that. And he's got a whiteboard behind him while we're talking. And it's, you know, RAM and CPU and stuff like that. But there's this one little box that comes off in the corner that has KBD PRT <laughs> on it. It's like, keyboard port on a game machine? Hmm, there's this other little box down here, EXT, DRV, external drive on a game machine? <laughs> so I go back, I talk to Morris and say, game machine, right? Game machine, yeah, 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 game machine. It's gonna be a little... I go, Jay, game machine? He says, yeah, game machine, yeah, game machine. <laughs> I was the first software guy that Bob Paraso hired, and um, when I was hired, I was hired as manager of entertainment software because I'd worked in the video game business. And um, I soon found out there are not a lot of starving startup companies that want to put aside all their other projects and work on a vaporware computer, which was, it totally was back then. And um, plus also I found out I'd much rather hack code than, uh, than um, you know, try to get people to, other people to hack code. Uh, I was hired as the manager of operating systems. And the day I got there, actually, the day I was interviewed there, Bob Harrison said to me, well, if you come here, you can design whatever operating system you want. I said, I'll do a multitasking operating system. So that's why I went to work uh, at Amiga, was the multitasking operating system. First, when I had my first interview, um, I had talked to the recruiter and she set up an interview. And uh, but I, I accidentally blew it off because I went to a, I forgot all about it. I went to an HP beer bust, which um, um, was important too. But, uh, but I looked at my watch at 7 o'clock and I go, oh my gosh, I just missed an interview that I was really looking forward to go to. So the next day I called them up and said, well, gee, I'm real sorry. Um, can I have another interview? Can we schedule another time? And they said, oh, sure, fine. Just come on down whenever, whenever you can. And uh, so I knew that there was a pretty good atmosphere there when... Uh, um, when that happened. I'm interviewing with Gary McCoy, who, for whom I was supposed to work, and he takes me back into the software lab where everybody is all over everybody else, and I guess you guys were really used to giving demos to venture capital people and such. So I come through with, with, Gar with Gary, and the talking heads are on, and I'm awestruck. I'm watching this thing. And, but it was very loud in there. <laughs> very loud and very warm. I mean, if it wasn't the voice, they were the fans in the background. And so I'm watching this and Gary's getting very frustrated because he was proud of what we were seeing. And finally just exploded. Knock it off! He screams. And I was trying to calm him down. I'm interviewing from a job and pissing everybody off. So he says, I said, don't worry, Gary, I can understand, I can lip read. Oh. And so after the demo, Sam comes up to me and says, really? Could you read the lips? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, <laughs> well, how close was it? Was it pretty close? I was joking not to make Gary, but I thought, this is perfect. This is the really best company to, to work for. He was really working on that. Well, now that Jay is here, I can tell the story in front of Jay so he can agree that, in fact, it's true. Everybody seems to think Jay is the father of the Amiga. And when you look at Jay and the real father of the Amiga... Yeah, this one, my yeah, it says so right on his page. Even they made the same mistake. It's quite natural. <laughs> one magazine back in the Amiga days got it right, but everybody laughed at it like it was some sort of a joke, but it was actually the truth. Jay was holding Mitchie in his arms. Right next to Mitchie, it said the father of the Amiga. And up here, it said Jay. And yeah, 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 yeah. This is Jay, Jay. The this father, is the father of the Amiga. Amiga. <laughs> we knew inside that this was a true story because we're sitting there at our desk designing stuff, and Jay, who sat in front of us, was sitting at his desk designing stuff. And he'd get to some spot where he wasn't sure. Well, do I put this gate here? Do I put and he thinks about it and see, draw a gate. And he'd look down at Mitchie. And Mitchie would go, blah, 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 blah. and so he'd erase it. He'd erase it. And he'd draw another gate. And he'd look down at Mitchie. Mitchie would go, and so then he would put that kid in. We know because we were there. Mitchie did the Amiga. Jay, you know, Jay did the drawing. You know, it's all right. It's okay. But I wanted you to be here so that you could not shoot me. <laughs> well, allowing, allowing people to be different is terribly important. This guy would come to work and the huge fuzzy ba ba bathroom slippers. Bare, bare, or okay. bare feet. Yeah. Uh, Michael Plotnick would come to work in purple, 
purple uh, purple sweatpants. Uh, we could go on and on and on this way. I I brought I came to work with my dog. You know, and everybody had something that they wanted to do, and who cares as long as you get the work done. There was magic. I can't describe it. From the day I walked in and I saw that demo and I saw everybody contributing, cooperating, always a smile, always a smile, always the uh, uh, optimistic attitude and, and care for somebody else's um, happiness and participation and success, success. One person was not going to let somebody else fail because that would meant the failure of the whole project.